I fucking love my sneakers. And I'll always wear... In, in my closet, my most prized possession are my Balenciaga sneakers. I don't give a fuck. Comfiest. Love them. Everything about them. I don't give a fuck about anything else. Dude... I was just looking in my shoe in my closet and I was staring at them as that article was developing and I was just like I can't order another pair now. I literally can't buy a new pair now because of that shit. Before it was just in the ether, now it's real real. And I fucking love those shoes, man. More than Air Maxes. And I know Nike isn't innocent. There's no way. I'm not burning a thousand two hundred dollar fucking shoes, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? No, no, dude. That was the first time when I popped off on Twitch and made serious money. That was the first thing I bought because I really like those sneakers, man. Like the first time I had extra, extra money. But, uh,. Yeah, so now if I wear them, I'm supporting evil. Is that how it works? Yeah, because then young kids are like, oh, Zerka's so cool, I want to be like him. And then they buy them. Oh my god, I can only wear them in secret. I always knew I'm going to just say it out loud, but I'm like, even saying it out loud makes people look at the shoes. You know what I mean? I really fuck with the shoes, man. Like, I hate shoes. I'm bored of Jordans. I'm bored of everything. I don't even keep track with Jays anymore. No, I'm not going to sell them because, dude, these are some comf These are my favorite shoes, man. Like I'm not a materialistic guy, but uh, I really and I like I really like sneakers. Sneakers are oh sneakers always cheer me up. Like when I go sneaker shopping, I'm ecstatic. Triple S. Damn, these are nice. I don't have these, and these are the ones I want to get. I have the all whites. Fuck, these are nice, man. I'm not a fashion cuck. Ask anyone. I don't, I'm not a fashion guy at all. I think I used to be. I had like a year, but I, trust me, sneakers are the only thing that, I mean, like, for me to spend $1,200 on a shoe, that's, I'm not that guy ever. But, I really like my fucking. This is ball worship, dude. This is bad. Oh, they look fucking retarded with a skinny leg. <laughs> if you've got nice meaty calves, it'll look better. But these are fucking ugly as shit. This color is just traumatizing. But oh my god, that's nice. I could wear a white sweater, a uh, white sweatpants, a nice white watch like a little g-shock or something and just these glowing at my feet and look so sick you don't understand guys because look at this this is my favorite shoe i just fucked these up though um this is my new favorite shoe of the year because i i just destroyed them i don't know what my air maxes are even called what the hell are my Air Maxes called? Nine, not 90. Air Max 2.7. I don't know what my own Air Maxes are called. Are these the ones I have? I love these, dude. Trust me when I say... 
buy shoes for comfort. These are the most comfortable fucking shoes I've owned. But the Balenciagas are softer, in my opinion, to walk around in. But maybe it's because I don't walk around. I don't try and beat those up. These are a lot less expensive. Well, they're still a lot, but for a fucking shoe, they should be like $10. It's fucking leather. You have fashion sense of a liberal. No, I don't. Nothing in my closet is liberal besides my shoes, right? And I'm not wearing Vans like you, you fucking bitch. Okay. Plus, I'm a big, I'm a heavy guy. Obviously, I want a meaty shoe. I don't want to step into something thin. Uh, to me, uh, Air Force One, which I love Air Force Ones. Air Force One. You try standing. Look, man, if you're 150 pounds, it's just a shoe. But if you're 250 pounds, this shoe hurts your foot because you sink, break it. You start breaking into the shoe. You're so heavy. That's why um, you need a shoe like this if you're heavy this shoe you can walk around all day which you won't because it's 12 1200 fucking dollars thousand dollars for a fucking they ripped me off but i wanted i'm in love with this one all right it's my ultimate dad shoe if you want to send it to me guys <clears throat> I fucking love some of these designs. And you know what's funny? When I first saw them, I hated them for a year. I said, this shoe is so gay for a year. And then I saw them on someone's foot who was my size. It was a big guy outside the club, outside a bar. And I said, and I made, made fun of his shoes. I knew him. And I kept staring at them and I'm like, are they comfortable? And he's like, yeah, they're pretty good. Mm. But for that kind of, uh, let's see, what, I, what would I wear if it was a Jordan? I still love the sixes. This is my f favorite shoe of all time. Yeah, this is my favorite shoe of all time. It just sucks that it's never icy. It gets yellow at the bottom if you walk with them. But this is my favorite shoe of all time, for sure. Because the sixes are cozy, man. They're comfortable and they look so nice. Carmines look dumb. I don't like Carmines. Bordeaux's, I don't like them. Uh, I only like... They look like cuck shoes because everyone who wears Jordans is a fucking hype beast bitch. But I promise you they look good on me. I, I, I fix it, you know. <clears throat> I have Crocs. What are you talking about? I have, look at this. Excuse me. The first thing I bought with my big Twitch paycheck was new Crocs. And my, my chat was like, what the fuck? But look how nice they look. Uh, fuck. I, I don't know what any of these things are called. Uh, wait. Um, what did. No. No, my Crocs were nice. I had them on stream. I used to IRL in them, and my feet would never get smelly. Hold on. Crocs. New design. My Crocs were nice, dude. I can't find them. What happened? Bro, what did I buy, chat? Oh, there they are. I think it was this. Yeah, this is the first thing I bought before any other sneaker. These, so I'm not no fucking liberal, dude. I don't buy fucking fashionista shit. I buy shit I like. So don't call me a fucking liberal, bitch. And these are cheap as fuck. Which ones did I get, though? All gray is nice. I wish they were even thicker, though. It's so cozy. Cozy, but I wouldn't walk around town in them all day. I could get. And what else is in my closet? Oh, yeah, I have Air Max 90s in all white. This is pretty much my Air Force. You know how everyone has a pair of Air Forces? This is like just my Air Force. I love this shoe, right? 
every fight I've ever been in is in this shoe, 10 toes down. And uh, this is the shoe that I never bought, but I said I would buy. This E, if you ever want to give me a present in size 12, ew, this is so ugly. This. These Olympic sixes, this is my favorite fucking Jordan ever made and it's the one of the most hated people hate this one it's not popular at all i mean it's like a collector but people hate this jordan and i fucking love it this is this is main character syndrome this is what the main character of the anime wears looks so ugly on this guy's feet though you know dude they look so look how bad jordan's look with shorts on and look how cold they look with uh pants with pants they look all right still this colorway is ugly as fuck but i like this one this one is so what the fuck that's gay bro yeah some fake jays look nice <laughs> uh yeah this is a sick shoe i like this and then i also had these jordan seven this is my gayest shoe <laughs> This is my gay. This is my first paycheck ever when I worked at um, Target. I was 16 years old. This is the first thing I ever bought. I worked all week for two hundred dollars or something, and I thought I was rich. And this is the first thing I bought. This is the gayest fucking shoe I ever bought. But it and I wore it to TwitchCon right out of my closet, the years ago. <laughs> I don't know why I liked it. Looking back, this is like, yeah, not the sevens. Oh shit! Now I remember why I liked it. That's actually so cold. Not icy, but yeah, the icy bottoms are better. But this is pretty sick. Comfortable shoe. They say it's cardboard, but I liked it. Hair sevens. I remember that. Hair. It was the, with the green. Yeah, the tongue was all goofy. Yeah, I like that kind of red. That kind of like infrared look. Something that drives me crazy is the Jordan 6 Varsity Red. I used to love this shoe until I realized this is ugly as fuck. Right? This this should be illegal. It has to come in infrared. Infrared, this is the sniper of all reds. This is the best red ever made. I can't even tell on camera though. Ooh, that's a good shot. The raging bulls. And I also had uh Jordan. What are the red ones called? The Son of Mars or whatever. What are the fire red? Obviously, fire red. Fire red fives, and then there's fire red fours. I had these fours, which actually don't look that bad. Just in person, they don't look. They look really nice, All right? These are classics. Fours are nice, yeah. I never liked the fives, and my friends try and kill me for this. My fashionista friends love the fives. I don't fuck with fives or the aqua eights. <laughs> My buddy has these this shoes fucking ridiculous, bro. This is the liberal shoe. <laughs> Although this aquatic camel reminds me of the black ops day. Like do you remember how easy life was when we all just played call of duty black ops and we didn't stream it. We didn't try and get famous from it. We just played because we were done school and work and we had school and work because we were old enough to work and to go to high school and we just got our driver's license and and we just got our crush to texas back and like everything happened during black ops you know that was a great time for me because that i think black ops was the last game and battlefield 3 for me and then i quit gaming Really should have stopped with Halo 3, but... Yeah. 
Because I wasn't even that good at Black Ops. Yeah, these shoes are ridiculous, right? But back then, it was the Yeezy ones, which nowadays nobody knows what. If you wear these in public, Zoomers don't know what this shoe is. And they're obsessed with those fucking cloth-like degenerate Yeezys they wear all everyone has a pair of Yeezys and they don't even know what the original Yeezy is or like Panda has the red Octobers this is $80,000 now this is crazy for a shoe these are the twos which are stupid in my opinion this is a little much all right, this has to be the ugliest shoe ever. Is the Yeezy in this colorway? Yeah, what the fuck were they thinking? Oh, that's not a bad picture, but geez, this just look at the colors, man. This looks like vomit, band aid. <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck? Wait, let's see what the Yeezy. I skipped this whole wave. All my friends bought Yeezys except me. To me, this is a fucking gay shoe. I've never. I've always said it's just a free run. Let's be honest. Like free runs were the first people to have this design. And, <laughs> Like, I try and do the artistic thing, but I can't, bro. This is pathetic. The Yeezys are fucking trash. All right, let's start the podcast. This is enough shoe talk. So, yeah, that's my opinion on Balenciaga, is that they got my ass. Okay. In many ways, unheard of. But right now... I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. You were uh, with your families or loved ones or at least uh, relaxed and enjoyed yourself. Over the past week, there was a, a particularly big <laughs> news story that's resulted in a continued news cycle, which is now going on for over a week, which is in many ways unheard of. But right now, because Donald Trump went to dinner with Ye and Nick Fuentes, among others, he is now being denounced by Mike Pence, several Republican senators. And uh, for whatever reason, this story, for, for many reasons, I suppose people have made, this story has persisted till today. And we are able to actually sit down with the, uh, several of the individuals involved in that story, notably Ye, Nick Fuentes, and Malinopoulos, of course, who made the dinner happen. It's my understanding. Or no, at least got the no. in- I, had, I had the dinner invite before I met Milo. Okay, my bad, my bad. There you go. So uh, we're going we're gonna to jump right into I this story. I just overcomplicated it. Absolutely. So we're, we're going we're gonna to start with that. There's a lot we, we, we want to talk about. And uh, you know what, man? This is a, this is a very uh, big story. Uh, a lot of people have questions about, you know, what were Trump's intentions? Why were certain people invited? And Trump, of course, has, has issued statements. So a lot of people want to know where he stands and more importantly, what happened there and why. And there's also the questions about what Ye24 means. And I'll keep that a little bit vague so that they can answer to that and, and speak more to that. And then, of course, we're going to get into a lot of different issues. However, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. We're going to have a members only uncensored show, which will probably get a bit more in depth on a lot of other issues. Okay, you can't threaten me, Stella. I'm going to stream snipe you. I'm in van. You're not in van. That's not my. It is good though. Like, no, no bullshit. This is not my it's city. Not like, wow. Where it thinks you're in a famine. So then it throws you into a panic. Okay. Where you don't feel it necessarily mentally, but. You gotta tell your chat like, to come here. Go. Why is not the chat show? Okay, it's at 60 now. Let me know if that's better. What is the stream about? Okay. Stella, here's what you're going to do. You're going to uh, auto-host me now. I'm hurting bad. Uh, or I'm perma-banning you. Issues. Uh, that, I'll just leave it at that. TimCast.com, become a member, support our work, and we'll talk about more there. Smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us, as I mentioned, is we have Ye himself. Would you like to introduce yourself, good sir? You did it. There you go. I think everybody knows who you are. And uh, which of uh, you gentlemen would like to introduce yourself? Nicholas, please. Hi. Yeah, I'm uh, Nick Fuentes. First time here on the Tim Cast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's Nick. What the fuck? This is the first guy um, 
I saw on Twitch because when right when they banned me, they put Nick on right after me on the Scuffed podcast, and everyone's like, "Did you watch it?" And I'm like, "No, I didn't watch it." And then a month later, I was so late. I watched that Scuffed podcast is Nick versus Hassan Piker. Yeah, absolutely. What do you do? Oh, <laughs> I'm a live streamer. I uh, I do a show called America First on Cozy TV. All right, and of course, Milo, you were here a couple weeks. Well, he's not just a live streamer. He has like a AF America First. Uh, rally or whatever it is and people go to it it's it's organized it's scary it's like bro aren't you like 19 years old weeks ago yes i'm your best ever guest <laughs> so we, we've been told that uh, the episode with you is one of the best podcasts ever people really enjoy hearing you speak i think it's accurate okay yeah well, thanks, thanks for coming thanks, back thanks for, i was wondering how i was going to uh, make it even more extraordinary the second time i visited but i think i might have pulled it off <laughs> luke's here <laughs> total sausage fest tonight um Indeed. welcome my name is Zukadowski of wearechange.org today i'm wearing my epstein didn't epstein himself t-shirt which you can get on the best political shirts.com and i think we should you'd be surprised at how base this guy is this dude, I have no idea who he is, but I saw him on Joe Rogan, Alex Jones. Oh, we streamed this a year ago. This was great. Blair White, Alex Jones, Joe Rogan all meet up in a trailer park. And it was good. I this rocket's on burning wires. Turn the key and light the fire. We're we'll leaving Earth today. This, this rocket's burning bright. We'll soon be out of sight and orbiting in space. Space. Push back in my seat. Look out Look my out green my screen. Window. There it goes, green screen. That, that ball, ball of shiny blue. Ball of shiny blue in the chat. Houses everybody, anybody ever knew. So, so sing your, your song. song. I'm listening. Out with stars, I'm listening. I can hear your voices bouncing off the moon. You could see our nation from the International Space Station. You know why I want to get back soon. 18,000 miles of life fueled the science of solar power. The oceans racing past. This song has no delay from outer space. minutes move to sun. A bullet can't go half this fast. Okay, bro. Floating from my seat. Look out my window. There goes home. Green screen. That brilliant ball of blue. Is where I'm from and also where I'm going to. So sing, so sing your song. I'm listening. Out with stars, I'm listening. I can hear your voices bouncing off the moon. If you could see our nation from the International Space Station. You know why I want to get back soon. All black and white just fades to gray. Imagine the curtain fell and you see the astronaut behind it. That Wizard of Oz thing. Imagine that curtain fell behind him and then you just see him with a guitar and they go, uh, 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 uh there's solar winds and, uh, Tiny atmosphere. <laughs> Push back in my seat. Look, Look out, out my, my window. Here it comes. CGI. What once was fueled by fear 
now has 15 nations orbiting together here. Are you kidding me? So sing your song. I this is what globalism is. Out there stars are listening. I can hear your voices bouncing off the moon. If you could see all these traitors betrayed all their countries for a globalist message of there's no evil, we all got to get along, but really some ideologies are very disgusting. Hear your voices bouncing off the moon. If you could see a nation from the International Space Station, you know why I want to get back soon. You know why I want to get back soon You know why I want to get back soon Yeah, you know why I want to get back soon You know why I want to get back soon That's interesting that almost reminds me of SpaceX rocket. <clears throat> Is this Boca Chica? On the landing <laughs> pad in Boca Chica. <laughs> Look, I've had adults, I've had doctors and lawyers on my stream who don't understand what's wrong with this footage. Phallic worship. You see this uh, obelisk in the Vatican too. You know why buildings are not beautiful anymore and inspired by um, the Bible? It's because every building has to be an obelisk. A big middle finger phallic object towards God. They don't make b beautiful buildings anymore because th the ruling class hates God. That's why they make everything into an obelisk. Into a tube. It's not because it's like more economical. Ridiculous. <clears throat> I mean, this is just. Look at this shit. <laughs> Sir, cut threatens ice beside for banging his ex girlfriend. Brilliant. Bro, we got Why'd you bang her, bro? Circa threatens Dunkel for talking to his e girl, Sabrina. Where is it? Uh, oh. Digital shit we have around here. Over the water in this lake and tried to descend in it and bounced off. It was so super saline and dense that the submarine couldn't go down it. We literally bounced off. And as we bounced off, oh my God. we sent ripples oh heading back. To the shore. Wait, where is it? Oh, here it is. I I love this. I can't. Dude, this was amazing. Amazing. It, it will go. It will go on on Destiny's podcast once a week. Destiny and I are gonna go at it. Thank you, thank you, Train. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Destiny. Is... Now, wait. Somebody just link like a figure sleep.
Interesting. Okay. Well, it's something interesting about the G that means God, Grand Architect, General, Generative Principle, all that, is that it's the seventh letter, which is seven is the number of God, right? Or like the seven attributes of God, the seven planets above, etc., etc. And that's why they have it. <laughs> Was it Walter Martin? Yeah, he destroyed him. Why did God give men nipples? For aesthetics, bro. Like, think how stupid your chest would look without some nips. Need some Bruce Lee nips, some fucking Spider-Man nips. It's for aesthetics. What do you think of Chinese president? Look, man. Look, I'm on board with everything China does, but after these lockdowns, I'm off the train. Nope, not gonna. I'm not gonna be protecting tankies anymore. Tankies are coping. They wrote in my Twitter feed right before I locked my Twitter. They wrote when I was getting brigaded. One of them wrote, "John, the protesters are protesting for harsher lockdowns. They're not protesting against the." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my." God. God, the level of cope we're at, right? What about Haas? Well, all my tanky friends, when I ask them about lockdowns, they just look to the floor and they go, well, it's just uh, a lot of propaganda. It's not that bad. And I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. Like, Tankies are closet MAGA tards, right? We're MAGA tards. But uh, by tards, I mean like, we kind of let Trump get away with a lot of dumb shit. We should have been calling him out on a lot of stuff when he was president. We let him do a lot of stuff that just damaged our party. I like the Lebanese, yeah. Bringing my TV. Nah, I'm going to give this one to my bro. I bought my older brother one. I didn't get my twin anything, so I'll just give him this one. And that way I can buy a fresh new one. And something something happens when I spend heaps of money, I make heaps of money. Like, you know, my mind gets, oh, got a rush. So I'll get a big, fat new TV and just invite people over and just, you know, do, I'm going to do cuddle streams in Texas. <laughs> and watch TV streams. Can we do audio only? I think I caught a cold. <sighs> yeah, light speed and I don't really incriminate myself live, so nice try. Mm -hmm. really hard to stream when you're sick dude i get this fatigue <coughs> i never get sick ever since that vaccine will you ever wear a swastika hat what <laughs> Depends if I buy it from an Indian or a German. <laughs> yeah, I'm sick. I came out of nowhere. Oh, fuck. No. Oh, shit. I spilled all the cigarette ashes on the. No. No. <sighs> Oh, I forgot I put them in a napkin. I'm supposed to you get old, you forget. I've been on my ass and old. And God said, let there be light. 
and voila, there was light. <sighs> okay. Smoking where you sleep is degen. Uh, I don't care, bro. I really don't care. The king does what he wants, okay? Fapping where you sleep is degen, and you're covered in dried nut. You smell like dry nut. This hat's being burnt, right? This hat was for a meme, and then I closeted it, but we're going to get rid of this hat. Don't worry. I don't. Does anyone think I support these pedos? No, this is ironic, right? <clears throat> we're going to burn this hat. I'm not a brother. All you care about is power. Yes, true. Donovan, I hope you have a great Christmas. I hope your dreams come true and I hope you eat my favorite food. What is my favorite food, Donovan? Only one guy got it. Two. No, not turkey sandwich. That's new. Two people got it. It's stuffing. It's st I talk. I talk about stuffing for like an hour. Stuffing is my favorite food. I could eat stuffing alone with something. With I could eat it with anything. Stuffing, because we Albanians don't really have that food, so it's new to me. <coughs> I love stuffing. I wonder if there's different kinds of stuffing, you know what I mean? Or is it always the same recipe? No, I first had stuffing when I was 19 years old. <laughs> I was 19, no, I think I was 20 when I first had stuffing. And I said, what is that? And the white lady said, that's stuffing. I said, what culture, what culture is that from? And they said, it's white people shit. I said, no way. White people? I love white people. I love them the most. And she said, no way. And I started eating it, and I said, yeah, this has to be in my top five. Went to top three, and now it's my favorite food of all time. I've never had it with sausage, but... Because inside the turkey, it just cooks in the in an interesting way. Yeah, you could have stuff. You could have gravy with stuffing. You could, dude, wintertime, I get so fucking husky. I get so fat, so fucking. I pretend I'm Jack, but I'm just really like, oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I love stuffing. I love stuffing. I've always loved stuffing. What is stuffing even made from? That's a good question. Bread, maybe flour, um, I don't know, I don't know, it's just like fucking, that's a great question. Can you make stuffing out of any bread? Like if I got a big garlic bread and I cooked it and made it crunchy and then mixed it up together. Could I make stuffing out of garlic bread? Has anyone ever thought of doing that? That would be great. Garlic bread is actually really good. I haven't had it that much in my life, but it's pretty good. It's underrated. I don't see that at restaurants. Like you can't just order garlic bread, can you? Super delicious. What else? 
mashed potatoes is hard to do. Like most people who do mashed potatoes do it wrong. Some people make it that really heavy, creamy, fattening. Like, you know that one that just hits your stomach like, oh, like a brick? That's what mashed potatoes should be. Not that shit you get at restaurants. Mashed potatoes has to be like pretty much butter to be good. That's And, and mashed potatoes is probably one of my favorite foods of all time. Mac and cheese, it's only good if it's gourmet. And even when it's gourmet, it can be too much. Yeah. I get mac and cheese in Vegas, but I don't know. It's a little too heavy. There is such thing as too heavy. I like fatty stuff. <laughs> Oh my God, who said that? Oxtail. Dude, I had my first oxtail last year. Oxtail is great. Is that Jamaican? Bro, oxtail is so unique. It's salty, but it's like, not in a bad way. Oxtail is so unique for meat. It's so unique. I had Jamaican oxtail. I love that shit. Had it twice in my life. Oxtail is great. Sounds gross, but it's great. <clears throat> Chinese barbecue duck? No. I love Chinese barbecue. But I get the chicken, crispy pork... And the barbecue pork, which is overrated, but yeah, I still eat it. But that crispy pork is, dude. Let me tell you something. Crispy pork is super underrated. That snapping pork. No one in my family eats pork except me. And I'm like, you guys got to try this one, at least. <laughs> <sighs> like nobody in my family will eat swine because they say it's a filthy animal. Uh, I don't even like pork. I hate pork. I hate bacon. I mean, I'll have bacon, but I don't really enjoy it. But crispy pork is actually good. It's like the dessert of the meat world. It's way snappy. It's like, let me show you. Roasting pig. Spit roast. Um... Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Ride. It looks so fucking gross when it's dead. Hey, I'm out. Look, these people eat the ears too. It's so creepy. Just get, take the head off, bro. From Reed, today I'm going to show you how I do suckling. These fucking three pigs. I'm kidding. Okay, look at what he does. I'm going to help these little piglets lay better on the rack. We also want to clean up any areas around the neck and just remove anything that doesn't look appetizing. The silver skin, any excess fat, any places where there might be a little bit of blood. Just get it out of there. Hey, these two pigs had the kidney still attached. So go ahead and remove those and get that silver skin off that bacon. We want to expose that meat under there so we can get some seasoning on it. It's going to make it really good. That's all. What we're going to do next is our injection. I mixed up some Victory Lane pork injection right out of the package with some apple juice. And we're just going to shoot this pig up. Going in the hams, you can see it blowing up. Just want to get some flavor down in the meat. We're not going to flavor under the skin on this style pig on it. Um, I'm putting these pigs up. I'm not trying to really feel these pigs are looking. Oh, yeah. Start to see we're getting some good color. That's so creepy, dude. The skin's hard. It's crisp up nice. This is the point where you can start protecting it a little bit with a little bit. Yeah, this looks so bit. gross. But eventually it looks delicious. Way, yeah, now it's glowing. My local butcher when saw Brad at the butcher's cut it bro they came in froze a few days thawing out slow in the refrigerator for the trim we just opened them up and we cleaned up the inside the, the skin the gets snappy morning. season them with the AP rub the barbecue rub use your favorite seasonings there injected them with the victory lane and apple juice put a ton of flavor inside these pigs put them on the smoke 225 hey you guys think I need a DSLR camera or should I stick to webcam just get a better one I kind of like where I can move it up to my face. I don't want a DSLR. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to split this. I might just sell my shit. I'm going to go right down. We're just trying to open it up. Or maybe I'll splice. Maybe I'll do multiple angles in the new place. Check this out. Oh, shit. He cut that motherfucker. We're going to open this up. And look at all this good meat that's in there. The juices run. That is a thing of beauty. See, the meat tastes kind of weak. Not going to lie. It's okay. But the skin is very crunchy. It's like fried chicken. Bit of this not really no, no, fried chicken's this. dry this is what turns into that good bacon I gotta try that. Mm, that's the best part on a pig what i'm gonna do is pull off some of this loin here and i'll just take out some of the meat some of the muscle so you can see how it comes apart 
And I just want to try some of this so y'all can see. This meat just comes apart. It's tender. It's juicy. Oh, this, looks a good bite, this is the. This is why I'm going to be a success. Because I just need a giant, giant backyard with a with multiple grills. And I'll do streams. Right? I'll hire this guy to help me. Right? Me, 20 bitches in bikinis. Right? And I'll be telling them their father hates them as they're crying. So I'm like turned on. And just start fucking cooking up and whipping up some good shit. And like eat with chat. That's good, boy. That's so tender. So, okay. Oh, wait, really the pork this way? So yeah, Joe Rogan has a good life. We're going to watch Joe Rogan in a sec. I can't wait. But, yeah, this is it. This is what I'm talking about. Look. Okay, so this is a Chinese man. And he's he's making... There's a fearlessness to how he works. Like, he's not afraid of everything. You know what's the worst food I've ever had? What's that hot pot thing called? Those restaurants that are like hot pot? What am I thinking of? Is it hot pot? Oh, it's literally hot pot. Yeah, that shit sucks. Yeah, see this? This is actually pretty good. Very salty. This, this is what I order when I'm in Richmond. Oh, yo, what the fuck? This is a boar. This guy has a good life. That's crazy, man. You. Fuck, I love watching these bloody ass videos. I get I get lost with these kind of videos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, rub that shit. Ew, what the fuck? Is that testes? Me on this Texas jungle. Here's what it looks like. That's what it seems to be. I remember when my teacher first thought I was a retard is when we were like learning about animals and shit. I think it was like grade 8, so I was old. And I said, lobsters are just the scorpions of the sea. <laughs> My teacher looked at me. I think I said scorpions that are water type. A water type scorpion. <laughs> but lobsters don't even have stingers and shit. I don't even like the taste of lobster that much, bro. Ooh, yo, look at this right here. This is Who's that fucking lady that co cooks in the wilderness? Oh, these guys who flatten their pork. Dirt with butter on it. Butter on it. <laughs> like, people will talk shit about redneck life all day, but it is the best life. Right? Like, you know this guy pipes his wife in the woods and got nothing to worry about. His life is not bad at all. Smoking hot. So you gotta try. It's on burn. Looks good. Oh, yeah. Y'all see that right there? Ooh, 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 ooh. Melt your mouth. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's how you Thank do it right you. there, folks. I don't have to try it. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I've been trying it. It's going to be good. Oh, my mouth There's nothing like sharing food with loved ones. It's just so nice. Like, I want to cook for people, but, like, I don't hate people. <laughs> All right, kill it. Oh, look. Oh, I love when they go through the mouth. Yeah, that fucking pig dead as fuck. Bats are not flying dogs. They're flying raccoons. Yeah, this pig was asking for it. Look at his face. Ew. 
Oh, he's bleeding now. Yeah. Ooh, snapping. So the pig has the uh, fat. That's why it gets snappy like that. Interesting. Hmm. It goes up his ass. No, the pig is not associated with the devil. The goat is. And the goat's associated because you're supposed to be the sheep, right? The sheep of God, right? The lamb. And the goat is his own God, right? He believes in himself, not God. That's why he has horns. <clears throat> and he's aggressive. I even think it's satanic to call people the greatest of all time sometimes. Like I avoid saying, oh, that's the goat. I don't like doing that shit. Oh God, is this fucking lip? This guy eats a lion. Remember when he eats lion meat and he starts crying? Okay, right now they're deboning. Sometimes I think about leaving it all behind and living off the land. Yeah, Karim, you're trying to sound like mystical, but you just sound like a homosexual that's coping, right? You're like a self-loathing homosexual. Just come out the closet, dude. Don't ever think you can get away with saying that in chat. Oh, God. Gentlemen, I think we got a beautiful cheek. That's beautiful. Oh, my God. So people who don't eat pork are not turned on by this? Like, if you avoided pork your whole life, do you find this appealing? Doesn't that look like a cow as well? So you just opened up the neck cavity. The veggies are intact and beautifully it cooked. Works. What is this? A Brussels sprout? That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is interesting. I thought this would dissolve away into nothing. But I still got some body to it. Yeah. We absolutely did one thing for sure perfectly. With all this animal slaughter, at least we got the vegetables right. <laughs> Everything I've tried so far, absolutely delicious. But now we're hoping mm. a fowl and flavor. There's our turkey. I love turkey. I think turkey's underrated, right? Like, look at this. Cooking turkey outside. Someone had to have done this. Yo, know, why is his neck like that? Yeah, snap that bitch up. Yeah. Oh, look at that soup. Is there anything better in live chat than soup? What in the chat for soup? I never have soup. Nobody ever makes me soup. I love soup. Kill that as well. Kill it. How am I 28 and I don't have my own farm? What the fuck is going on, dude? I love that I can just stream for the rest of my life. And I can just stream from my farm. Look at these guys. Get it, babushka. <laughs> oh, fuck, mushrooms are disgusting. L. It's nice pups. Ooh. People who eat mushrooms are literal pedophiles.
That's nice. It's a nice sauce. Nice. Ew! You have to ruin it, you fucking old hag. Mmm, nice tomato. That's a yummy idea. Imagine eating her out. Yeah, we're going to need mods in chat, dude. That is satanic. <laughs> I'm sick in the head. <laughs> oh, they're cooking the pizza now. Is that an Akita? Nice. A little bit of tea. Oh, that water sprinkles both ways. The less hot your wife is, the happier you are. <laughs> Look at Donald Trump, right? Oh, this dog's so cute. Erf, erf. Yo, ah, oh, that's a little too crunchy. You fucked it up, lady. <laughs> Olive oil, nice. Yeah, get it all romantic. <laughs> Oh, wow. One for the dogs. No shot. Babushka is sweet. Massive meat donor. What's a donor? Donor? Oh, donor. That's how you spell it. Mind blown. Look at all the meat. <laughs> Yo, you're fucking crazy, dude. Whoa. Oh my God. How did you make it so cube-like? Looks so rectangular. <clears throat> no shot. No, bro. Humans be thinking of ways to trap heat. What drugs are you on? Well, it's called not being able to cook. <laughs> it sucks. So sick of eating out. Never thought I'd say that. Where's the meat? Oh my God. 
OP. That's too OP, bro. These Arabs are too OP with their meat skills. Jeez. He even foot. I think he even put fat on top. We just want the sides, bro. Look at that. Look at that, dude. This guy's fucking losing hair. He's so fucking skilled. Oh, bread. Are you... Cr That's racist, bro. You need some... No, no, not bread, bro. Get something else. Look at his dog. Yo, toast that disgusting bread, bro. Yo, get the fuck out of here with that. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, get some bugs in there, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa. Look at this dog. These guys have got all sorts of animals. What kind of turtle is this? It's a white turtle. Oh, look at that. This guy's been busy. Holy shit. Oh, my God. This guy's got a lot of free time. <laughs> He's up, bro. He's up. She's not a gumball machine. The Epstein's Island? Is... <laughs> yeah, these the kids look kind of different. You're right. They're sweet, though. Are they all his? Oh my god, that's just water, dude. That's his true child. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Chef's kiss. Super. <laughs> that's Chad's dad. That's Chad's immigrant dad. You know your dad's an immigrant if he pronounces McDonald's McDonald's. <laughs> like, bro, <laughs> get it right. It's been fucking 20 years, dad. Get it right. <laughs> What is Slicker up to? <laughs> He's building a hut for Crazy Slick. That's cute. Wow. Could have built it a little wider though, but that thing gets hot. Wow. He's happier than us. He, this guy's never anxious. Right? This guy's never a fucking... This guy's not an e-girl drama. <laughs> Look at this puppy, dude. I, just eat the dog, bro. Just cook the dog. If you're, you're, you're a racist if you don't think that dog should be cooked and ate. <clears throat> I love eating dogs. This one time I went to Amaranth's house... And I chased her dog around with a spatula, and then she kicked me out. <laughs> John, why are your teeth so white? Because they cost more than your car. <laughs> Let's fucking go. See you in Texas.
That must be the biggest narcissist ever to drop this kind of fucking retard money. And you know, these people on Twitch are so snake like. These broke people, like these dunkles and stuff, trying to make me, like, what do I have to bring my receipt? Do I gotta show these people how much, like, Dunkle, you're broke. Dunkle, that's why your teeth look like that. You're broke. Like, Dunkle, you'd have to go to Turkey. <clears throat> gobble, gobble. <clears throat> I got a Freemason's hat on to reject masonry. I'm rejecting them. What is this? That's... What the fuck is... Bro, you pimp on your wife like this? <laughs> Super dead. Oh, we got two flags. Hey, we got three flags. All of them just went up. Hey. Let's go to the part where your wife is in the kitchen. Bro, people who eat fish are disgusting. Slap one more in. All right, so this is gonna be the plain one. <laughs> First, the old buddy guy. You'll slap your mama. Ooh, have some seasoning. Go camp down. Ooh, I think that's good. It's gonna be nice and seasoned. The old Chipotle. Ooh, they... <laughs> Wrong side. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna flip these guys, and this looks. He didn't even get mad. The bitch, what the fuck are you doing to my fish? He doesn't even get mad. She fucked up the fish. This guy is such a nice husband. Pretty good marinated, if you ask me. Kind of like a nice old barbecue rub. Not again, Shirley! <laughs> oh, this guy is simping. We just kind of mess around on the Kevin Cook's Chinese thing sometimes. That's how you find cool recipes. That fish looks pretty darn good. Anyways, proceed. Check that out, y'all. Golden crispy. This gotta be illegal. There we go. Alrighty. The concoction is cooking. Look at that. Now we're gonna add the old jalapeno in there. Because when you add the jalapeno in with the fish and the oil and stuff, actually, you can actually taste like the spice in the fish. And True. Not too much, but it gives it a nice little kick. Definitely try it sometime. True. Put more. more some put, put some there fucking. Yeah. Yeah. That's the. That's what we want to see. Look, this is the guy. Goodness, right there. <laughs> Definitely try the old compaction. Butter garlic slapping mama chipotle and the old kangaroo. Yo, imagine I ran into everyone I've ever talked shit about online. Okay, we're about to start Joe Rogan. It's just, what's Gordo up to? For me, without question, the star of the Christmas dinner is this, a delicious turkey. Now, once this is in the oven, you're halfway there. The secret success behind a great Christmas dinner is making sure this doesn't turn out dry and is all in the preparation. Now, we're going to make an amazing butter. And this is sort of the start of the, the most important part. Incredibly moist. Soft butter. A touch of salt and pepper. A little touch of olive oil in there. That stops the butter from burning. Next, add the zest of two lemons and their juice. This gives the flavored butter a wonderful citrus zing. Three cloves of garlic. Turkey is a very delicate, dainty meat. And that's why I want the garlic puree. So it sort of disintegrates and flavors the turkey gently without it looking sort of like it's standing to attention. Now it's time to add the flavored butter. Just very, very carefully open up the skin. Go through over the back of the breast and keep the skin intact. The idea is to gently loosen the skin with your fingers so the butter can be stuffed underneath it. Whoa, now, skin, I didn't know that. Top of the thighs, turn the bird around and just go through here again. Hand up and just release a little bit. But don't completely break it because I don't want all that butter to run out. Right, from there. Now, take your butter, put it into a ball. It smells amazing. Lemony, citrusy, and just sort of flatten it and stick that in there. Whoa. Underneath, Whoa. Inside. Now, once you've got it in there, pull back the skin and just use that to sort of slide all the way down. What we want to do now is line the top of the breast with all that butter there. That butter is going to keep the turkey breast really seriously moist. You think he gets like this when he fingers the chick? Right? You want to get it really moist. And you, you think he gets really into it? <clears throat> like, chicks must love this guy. Around? And finish covering the breast with the butter. He's not doing it to get her over. America, and they're best young and plump. My favorite breed for Christmas is either Norfolk Black or Norfolk Bronze. Look, out, his wife better be hot, right? Gordo wife. Imagine it's just train. <laughs> her? That's not even him. Gordon. Oh, it's her. 
She's nice. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with her. A little bland. I like it. They're not in an open, are they? Because I know he's been caught cheating and it's in like the book or whatever. Her lips are so thin. Oh my God. That should be illegal. Like we should tax women who have thin lips. You know what's funny is women attack me when I say that. Like you're a disgusting pig, blah, blah, blah. Why did you say Women attack dudes airlines and height and, and, and weight and women attack men all the time. But the minute you say, bitch, we should tax you. You should be in Guantanamo Bay for these thin lips. They fucking freak out. Doesn't work like that, bud. Nah. For looks, nah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd put some filler in this chick. This lady needs lips, bro. She needs to pray. What am I saying? I'm going to meet this guy one day. Okay, let's see the turkey. That smells fantastic. Looks okay. After 10 minutes, take the turkey out of the oven and baste. Then cover the breast with smoked streaky bacon. Bro, I used to think being a good cook is about technique and stuff like that. Did you know being a good cook is just applying salt and butter every eight minutes? And then you apply it even when the food is done. Like, when you watch these shows, it's kind of like, what the fuck? I can do that too, bro. I'm not trying to have a heart attack. But it's like, it's not that hard to be a good cook. I've tried doing how much butter this guy recommends, and it tastes delicious. But then it's like, yo, I need to, like, puke. What I want to do is add a little bit more flavor. I'm already starting to think about my gravy. Why is there it's bacon? It protects it. stops it from drying out. It's going to start to really give... My gravy, a wonderful base. Look at, look at this guy. Thin lips better than beef curtains. Dude, I wasn't talking about... <sighs> and the oven to 180 degrees. This five kilogram bird will feed eight people comfortably. It needs roasting for two and a half hours or half an hour per kilo, basting every so often. Back in. And now, she's on the way. Look at that. Beautiful. It's as pretty as a Christmas tree. That smells fantastic. Wow. Look at that. Bro, I hate Christmas trees that have purple on them. Like a Christmas tree is red, green. Not even white, really. Unless you have an angel, but... Uh, I hate Christmas trees that got that executive business look to them. Just such a turn off. The most beautiful trees have just the small yellow lights. They're bland. And some of those rainbow trees are just... Uh, when I first got on Twitch, I had a Christmas tree all throughout January too. I always had a Christmas tree except now. Should I get one or... I mean, we're leaving soon. We're leaving very soon. I want to cozy it up, yeah. Christmas is always a hard time for me because the worst things I've ever gone through in my life have always been around this month. And so I can never enjoy it. Like I try my best and I love it, but I can never get into it. That always reminds me of like something that happened to me four years ago, six years ago. Look at that bird. <laughs> Kill them. Kill them. Chickens are tasty. There it is. Kill this guy. That's a dinosaur. The fuck is this? This does not fit your house, bro. Kill this thing. Ew, look at that fucking scrotum. Oh, I did blur it. Yeah, heat that motherfucker up. Ooh. Yeah, grab it by the neck like the little bitch it is. So what's he doing here? Feathers? Oh, 
Babushka. Oh, when you see fingers like that, you know you're getting the best meal of your life. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yeah, put it in that spaceship. Look at that Neil Armstrong. Look at this ugly fuck. Wow. Stones and fire. That's what we want to see. That's how you eat it, dude. Yeah. Okay, what are we doing? Let's start the stream. Okay, today's stream we have Joe fucking Rogan. Woo! Afternoon stream, short stream, not a long stream. What is this? Hello, Um, have papillon. <laughs> Look what he wrote in chat now. <laughs> <laughs> No, he did not just type that. Yo, you are wild, dude. You don't belong on this website. Um, <laughs> it's Mohammed Atta. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you are actually a fucking weirdo for that. Are you sleeping on Like, you need a job so bad. Well, <laughs> Building 7 entered chat. Oh god. Imagine we just had 911 theme nicknames. <laughs> this guy doesn't understand. Dude, zoomers aren't going to get that. You're crazy for uploading that. How's this? It, it, look at Antarctica, you fucking idiot! How the fuck? Look at Antarctica, you fucking moron! Oh hey, look at Antarctica! You fucking adult! Look at Antarctica! This is not your model! Look at Antarctica! Are you trolling me? Look at Antarctica! It's not a landmass in this! It, it, Look at Antarctica! Yikes, what the fuck is wrong with you? Your mom and dad split up when you were five. Your mom and dad split up when you were five. <laughs> from, a, from a Jungian perspective, if you huh. look at your subconscious, what impact do you think that had on you? informing who you are uh, as a man as a human being well at the time i thought that my father was like a hero you know he was my dad i think every kid thinks like that about his dad his dad is like your dad's your protector your dad is like the coolest guy in the world so that's what you like, like. true yeah yeah everybody wants to be like their dad especially if your dad is like an imposing figure i remember one time me and my cousin got in a fight over nothing it was like over uh who's tougher king kong or godzilla yeah over nothing that's an important <laughs> but yeah I and you. uh he said actual godzilla. fight actual oh i punched fight. him in the face and um uh this is when you were like five yeah yeah uh, and so which side were you on uh, king kong okay i was wrong godzilla's like <laughs> way bigger yeah, yeah. godzilla's 500 feet tall and he shoots fire out of his mouth yeah yeah are you sure i mean there's there's an argument to be made it's not all about size, right? No, there's no argument to be made. Anyway, you were on, on King Kong's side. Yeah, so... The shit out of your cousin. I remember he said to me, uh, like, I thought I was in, like, real trouble because I remember my cousin's mom was yelling at me and it was like, you monster, all this crazy shit. So um, my dad got me alone and he said, tell me what happened. And I told him, you know, we got in a fight. We were arguing over King Kong and Godzilla. And uh, I punched him in the face. And he goes, did you cry? I go, no. He goes, good, don't ever cry. And I remember that, like, whoa, OK. And I remember thinking, all right, I'm just going to start punching people. <laughs> like, because, like, obviously, my dad thinks it's a good idea if I go running around punching people as long as I don't cry. Like, it, the, I remember certain things about, you know, and also, like, this is, a, again, like, we were talking about watching Lenny Bruce and getting a, a timeline of what the world was like back then. This is a different world. Yeah. You know, in, in 1970, this would have been 1972. 
It's a different world back then, man. Like a, a really different world. It's... Will you tell your son don't cry? First of all, <clears throat> this is a weird story to me because I think it's only white parents that will sit down with a five-year-old toddler and be like, what happened? <laughs> Immigrant parents don't even know that the toddler speaks anything, any English, any language. They would never sit down and say, explain your side. What the fuck? It's such a weird story to me. <laughs> Sitting down with a five-year-old and being like, let's get your POV first. <laughs> I'd have just been punished. Right? Even if it wasn't my fault, I'd get punished. It's just weird. Like, white parenting is so strange to me. But my dad said that to me at a young age. Like, don't cry. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, my dad used to say man up all the time, right? Uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff like that. Super old-fashioned guy. Some of that. So uh, Carl Jung talked about the shadow. It's the unconscious where you have dark stuff. And oftentimes you use it to project. There's stuff that you're very self-critical about yourself. But because it's in your unconscious, you use it to project onto others. You see it as flaws in others. And that's a good way to, like, whatever. Um... That's the truth, too. Do you know um, a short girl is obsessed with a tall guy because in her subconscious she feels inferior and that he's completing that insecurity of hers for her offspring, for her kids? Or, like, a girl who has, like, no muscle will like a muscular guy because she's always wanted to have, like, nice muscular arm or whatever. That's true. It gives a, a quote, like everything that irritates that's young. Us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. Mm, so that's a, that's a nice way to... It goes with muscles yourself, as like a dude. pisses you off. You start asking questions of your own mind, and that's how you bring it to the surface. But anyway, from that, those are formative years. From that time, is there still stuff in your unconscious you think you haven't examined? Some dark shit? I don't think so. I don't, I'm not aware if it is, because I've looked, <laughs> you know? Like if someone, get, you know, someone says, uh, you know, I, I, I left something over your house. Like, where'd you leave it? I don't know. Like, all right, I'll go look. Yeah. I'll get a, get a real thorough look. But I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's not there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think I've looked. I mean, um, it certainly had an, I think the positive effect. What Joe Rogan deep down has never unpacked is how badly he wants to express himself as a true right winger but the comfort the money the sponsors stop him from doing so and it's his greatest mental block it's his greatest depression it's the only thing that keeps him up at night and this is like the problem with every single creator really at the top is that they look at the smaller channels who are more extreme and they go, I'm living through that Zerka guy. But really, it's like, hey, man, you've got $100 million. You can let go. Let it go now, okay? There's no more money to be made, Joe. Let it go. It's over. But then they, they're addicted to being relevant, too. Because when you're relevant, everyone wants to be your friend. You get that star feeling. Everyone's around you. But also that phony feeling of, like, I can't say it also was compounded by the fact that when my mother married my stepdad who's a great guy who was a hippie how can how can a stepdad be a good person what the hell is a stepdad it makes no sense to me i i understand like an orphan thing situation but a step that's a stranger very different we moved around a lot and so w the bad thing about that was I didn't really develop long-term friends. The good thing about that was that I was forced to develop my own opinions about things. Do right, you see that? Kim, someone linked me that Kim Kardashian thing. I commented on her. And, you know, I'm waiting to get attacked and flamed by gay Twitter. And then everyone just liked my comment. I think we got 300 likes. And someone linked me what I said to Kim. I keep going after her, dude. Like, I'm relentless. Instead of adopting an opinion of the neighborhood and the group about anything, I was forced to form my own thoughts and opinions. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Uh, boom. 
Oh, wow. People like this comment. I said, where's the dad? Did you fail your kids? 400 almost likes on Haterade. <laughs> I'm like after her, bro. I've commented in the last nine posts. Right? She can't, now she's now she's seeing the top rated comments. Now now I'm on her ass. Now I'm, I'm fucking locked in. Yo, shout out anyone who liked this. You guys are on their side of God. Right? You know Kanye sees this and he goes, Who's this circa guy? Oh, she sees it, dude. These narcissists read every comment, especially the ones where we rally together. I said, Where's the dad? Did you fail your kids? I should have really added a question mark after that one, too. Yeah, make sure you like this tweet, bro. Make sure she sees this. She needs to know. You can't just break apart a family and humiliate a man until he starts becoming a Nazi. <laughs> I called it. I predicted Kanye will go live one day dressed as a Nazi. And he'll call it fashion. I predict this will happen. about almost everything another and one what is this one? Oh yeah look at this one <laughs> apologize to kanye <laughs> i'm like on her ass bro <laughs> she can't escape me holy shit and so it made me much more of an independent thinker so that on top of the fact that you know, losing, you know, my quote unquote hero very early on and then having to form my own opinions about things. It left me with a very, uh, a very independent streak, you know, in terms of and, and if I hadn't done the things that I got interested in martial arts and then and then comedy, if I hadn't gotten interested in those things, I would have been fucked because I was just too independent for normal jobs. I was too independent for school. I just didn't want to listen to people. I was too feral. I just didn't want to, didn't want to sit still. I, if I was with the wrong parents, especially today, I most certainly would have been medicated. Yeah, there's so many possible trajectories you can imagine where you would have not been the person you are today. Oh yeah. This is probably one of the best <laughs> possible trajectories. You're living. This you know, the, this particular storyline you're living through is was one of the better ones. This timeline is as good as it gets for someone <laughs> like me. <laughs> Aww. Uh, is there advice you can give to people to young to young kids that are living through a shitty situation of any sort, a tough life? Find a thing you like. Try to find a thing that you really enjoy. Try to find a thing that you're passionate about. Like an activity. Yes. For me, early on, it was drawing. It was uh, illustrations. It was no way. Me too. What the fuck? Uh, comic books I wanted to be a comic book illustrator and then it went from uh, comic book drawing and illustrations to um, martial arts so but it was a, just another thing that I was very very passionate about and that was my vehicle out of my dilemma that was my vehicle out of my my own anxiety and trauma and my own issues and insecurities and Find something. Find a thing that you genuinely enjoy because getting good at no things you arts. genuinely enjoy is extremely beneficial. Is street fighting a martial art? Bow, bow, bow. Fuck, man, I miss being me. Ugh. For young people. Because it lets you know that, like... Everybody thinks they're a loser. Every young person thinks they're a loser. At least a young person in the situation now. Zoomers are losers. Everyone knows. Look, if you have less than $250,000 in your bank account over the age of 25, you're a fucking loser. You're a fucking loser. You don't know what you're doing in life. Day in and day out. He said it. He talked about how Club Q were groomers after they were fucked, after they were massacred. The right wing are monsters. 
And I'll tell you right now, the number one reason they constantly talk about pedophilia is because it's going through their head. Yeah. Non-stop they're thinking yeah. about kids. I guarantee you. The <laughs> reason Tim Pool wears a beanie is because he's trying to contain the pedophilia that's in his head. That's why he's always talking about it. He's seeing it everywhere. Why? You should see my because channel. He's projecting. Oh, Tim, did your feelings Ugh. get hurt? You call everybody groomers and pedophiles and, and pedophiles. And you have no concern knowing full wall there are lunatics who can't wait to murder them in your audience. Can yeah, I? no, oh, oh, but oh, my, oh, you can't say that about me. Oh, I can. I don't know. I don't know that if you are. I do know you show all the signs of it. Two can play at that game. Yeah, I mean, look, and keep going <laughs> if you want to. Keep going. Because yeah, look you, at you, fucking you'll go out. Super Wario over here. Look how he's unsure of it. He's like, I wonder if this popped off. I wonder if this clip is going to pop off. I wonder. If he thinks, he always thinks one of these rants is going to get him into the White House or something. It's like, someone's got to tell him, dude. If you're a meme on the internet, you have to go away from the meme thing. Because you've been a meme too long. Okay. I need to have one of these rage moments, man. That's why Miami, I can't wait. I'll be like, did you just fucking say that to me? Sounds like you're supporting fucking groomers and pedophiles. By the way, right? Since we're, st let's start political mudslinging early. This guy, there's audio leaks of him talking about having sex with animals. <laughs> with a, I think it was like, I'm thinking of Vosh, it wasn't a horse. I don't know what it was, but uh, was it? Someone give me the link. Like, Hassan, we're no longer friends. It's political time. Well, Joe Rogan does it. Tim You're Pool does it. One. Every Republican politician does it. And then I'm supposed to care about your goddamned feelings as you encourage people to murder. And then, oh, <laughs> who as well. Oh, well, look at her. Hi, She's a fucking psycho bitch. Hold on. She's totally psycho. She eats children. All right. Well, this is not even that long. We can. Let's see his freak out. Watch. This is someone who would lose a debate to me. <laughs> so, okay, here comes the right wing. Uh, right, Kurt, his, whole, his whole life is politics and he'd lose to her, me, right? On uh, uh, Twitter. I don't think we have to tolerate pedophiles because some a-hole shot up a gay bar. Frankly, a lot of people trying to convince us we need to tell, tolerate pedophiles seem to be happy to use any excuse to silence our opposition. I'm sure he had that take when it came to uh, getting boy more elected. The Wario is getting angry. Did in the Senate in Alabama? No, they right? look. They, the right wing yeah. loves pedophiles. They I, love it, and I'm, I'll explain that in a second. So then Tim Pool responds because there's no end to the depravity of right wing. Turks having sex with animals isn't anything new, dude. Dead Hexer is Turkish. Don't type that in chat, he will ban your ass. Media, he says we shouldn't tolerate pedophiles uh, grooming kids. Club Q. The highest ranking dude in the whole server is Turkish. <laughs> what are you fucking doing, dude? <laughs> don't fuck around, man, Just don't. Had a grooming event. How Had is it a grooming event? It's a drag show at a, mind your own goddamn business. There's no kids there. Consenting adults can do whatever the hell they please. They don't need your goddamn permission. Uh -huh. Oh, do we need permission from grifters now to enjoy our adult lives? Is that what we need? Grift I need grifters. Jenk, your boss was a conservative. <laughs> okay. Do you did you did we forget that? <laughs> Remember when he was a Republic a registered Republican? <laughs> you don't say the word grift on that show. Need permission from Beanie Boy Tim Pool? To go to a drag show? And, and by the way, shut up and sit down, Tim. How about that? How about that? Always involved in everyone's personal life and personal business. Didn't say a peep when it came to Roy Moore fondling 13 year old girls. Okay, let's talk about animals, though. I believe that I am going, I, if I were the ruler. Uh, this is when, <laughs> when he used to be based. <laughs> the benevolent dictator of the world, I would legalize. <laughs> Yeah, look like if he was the leader of the free world. Look at this. Reality where you are easy now. I believe that I am going. I if I were the rule, uh, the benevolent dictator of the world, I would legalize bestiality where you are giving. You are you are pleasuring the animal. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Why, why now? Why? Why did that happen? 
<laughs> it's the dumbest thing it I've really said. It really is the dumbest thing you said. No, 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 I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because, like, so there's, like, <laughs> the case that we covered where there was, like, a guy or a girl. You can tell he lost a lot of sleep thinking about this shit. No, this is his his political awakening was leaving bestiality. This is so funny to me, man. Or something that was pleasuring a horse, and the horse came to a conclusion, right? Yeah. So who got harmed? You know that people who are okay, look, not to be a downer about what you're saying because what you're saying sounds kind of funny, but a lot of people who are being raped can actually like have an orgasm. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Stop, dude. Stop. She's now going lip guard on him. So, like, if a guy is being raped, he can have an orgasm. Like, you can't right, say, well, oh, okay, one, if you come, that means you wanted it. That's not the right way to go. But, number one, you're being an unbelievable downer. I am, but okay. that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, she's, like, saying you're promoting rape on your channel. And he's like, yo, stop being a Debbie Downer. <laughs> Yo, come on, how is, how is Amazon promoting these guys? Like, how is Twitch team Hassan? Like, they, they, come on, at some point, it's like you have too many clips like this to where you're the good guys. Number two, they're not both humans. Number three, I mean, if you really ask the horse, did you mind? <laughs> the answer's gotta be, no. Oh. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? No. This is, such an this is when Jake was Albanian. Now he's a now he's totally changed. It is. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna leave. It. Okay. <laughs> That's the horse. So like if a guy is being raped. Right, she's getting emotional, man. You know this. The, imagine if now she, she, there was a rape victim saying this to him, and he said, "Hey, you're being a downer." They asked, you didn't ask what the horse thinks. <laughs> Why is it horses with liberals? Like Vosh wants, Vosh was leaked. I know Vosh's gonna say he's like a commie or whatever, but he was leaked for wanting to fuck a horse. And my first day on Twitch, I said I would do it with a zebra. And it's always the political guys. You can have an organ. Like you can't All right, say, well, oh, okay, one, if you come, that means you wanted it. That's not the right way to go. But number one, <laughs> you're being an unbelievable downer. I am, but okay. that's the truth. Number two, they're not both humans. Number three, I mean, if you really ask the horse, did you mind? The answer's got to be, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? No. This is such an awkward conversation. It is. All yeah. right, I'm going to leave it be, okay? Jesus, wow. How come nobody knows about that clip? There's another one that's bad, but like... And molesting them. One. Not a peep, because it's all about political power. It's what? all about getting your guys uh -huh. elected into Congress. And don't give me any of that garbage about how, no, I'm not on the right. I'm not on the right. Oh, I just yeah, yeah. spew right-wing propaganda all day. I am on the right. And all night. I'm, I'm, I'm not on the right. I'm Shut up and sit down. That. She's not... actually so based here. Like, most of these guys... Tim Pool, Joe Rogan, and people that I would never call righties. It's like you know, you know what you're doing. Like enough, enough. Like get just join the team. I'm not debating that. He's a monstrous right winger. He's a terrible, terrible person. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah. Look, I'm jaywalking. I'm progressive. But uh, you know, I think we should like the, all gay people are pedophiles and groomers, and we should all attack them and just do all these horrible things. To, so, and to, so we can go to our lunatic audience. And yes, Tim Pool, Matt Walsh, Tucker Carlson, you all have lunatics in your audience. And you called Anna Kasparian based. Yeah, she's super based for saying that. That was the most based thing. That's the only based thing she's ever said. When Joe Rogan says, I'm not a righty, but. But he knows he's going to be pushed to our side. Like, because he's trying to be accepted by both. And he's trying to do that independent, most money corporate route. <clears throat> and which is funny because I wouldn't consider Joe right wing at all, <clears throat> but politically I would. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Like I know that he needs to fight for our side. I know he needs to fight for our side. And then Joe would look at me and go, "That's the problem when people start saying sides." Well, of course there's sides. The 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 brain is split. There's men who are weak 
and men who are conservative, and that's it. That's how the brain splits, okay? Throughout the population, that's how the brain splits. There's men who go, oh, I must protect what I have, and men who go, ah, let's try something where like uh, we give all power to the state and see if we get some tax, tax refund benefits and oh shit, they're beheading all of us. This is bad. You know, there's, there's conservatives and then there's fucking retards. <clears throat> and you weaponize them and you know it. I mean, look at him. I'll finish the tweet to be fair. How do we prevent the violence and stop the grooming, he says. Oh, in other words, well, I didn't quite like the way he murdered all those people, but hey, I really like the fact that he attacked these people that I'm calling groomers based on nothing. I mean, he said it, Club Q had a grooming event. He said, it's not a goddamn grooming event, you monster. Okay, so what is a drag queen? A drag queen is someone who dresses in a way you don't like. Are you insane? Are you insane? Why do you care how they dress? Why do you care? It has nothing to do with kids. You should go. Maybe we don't like the way you goddamn dress with your stupid dumb beanie, okay? So what is it? Oh, should we call you groomer, pedophile? And then say, oh, I know somebody should do something to stop Tim Pool. He's wearing a beanie. He's a monster. He probably molests little kids. <clears throat> the argument isn't the beanie, though. The argument is that Tim Pool is not dancing sexually naked in front of children for money. <laughs> right? I, I have a problem with the beanie too, but damn. You know what's funny is at the end of the day, all these political guys are just little boys at the end. Like Vosh went to Tim Pool's house for a debate and he's like, I hate Tim Pool. I think he's a Nazi. And then he went live. He's like, uh, you know, he's actually not that bad. He has a skate park. He has a whole skate park in his living room. <laughs> and then his chat is like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> what the fuck? I just imagine Vosh in his pink helmet skateboarding. Uh, uh, push him, push him. Uh, uh, go easy. <laughs> How to see Jenk, Zerka, and Vosh at HorseCon 2024. <laughs> I just walk in, I go, actually, zebras are just horses wearing pajamas. And then they go, yeah, yeah. And what I meant by the zebras got a fat ass is... Because of a stupid beanie. Okay, <laughs> we don't do that because unlike you, we're not trying to get people killed. Unlike you, we're not monsters okay. who are constantly attacking people who are gay and in the LGBTQ community. I'm sick of these right wingers. Look at it, they're almost celebrating it. I mean, he nearly brought goddamn pom poms to the shooting. Listen, if you have problems with uh, men you, dressing as women or men dressing in drag, you know, first thing I would do as a right winger is I'd clean my own room, okay? Why don't you go have a conversation with Steven Crowder, who never Thanks. misses an opportunity to dress as a woman, which I have no pr <laughs> She's so fucking based, dude. I told you I fucking love her. She's like watching my channel, taking my talking points now. Problem with, but clearly he has an affinity for it. And you guys seem to think anyone who dresses in drag is- Anglos love to wear dresses. That's the truth. Straight, white, Anglos love role play, drama class, and to wear dresses. Everyone knows this, okay? That's why the only white people that are cool are from like my my side of it. Never mind, never mind. Somehow a groomer. So why don't you go have a conversation with your groomer buddy, Steven uh -huh. Crowder? But, oh, yeah. but the right wing are disproportionately groomers and pedophiles. So let's be super clear. I mean, let's talk about what, what yeah, let's talk about how people who have kids, families, and God are pe are pedos, right? It's, it's not, it's not, okay. What do we know about uh, the giant cases of pedophilia in this country? Number one is Catholic priests. Oh, God. One of the most- Oh my fucking God. Let's not talk about like millions of Catholic people. Let's talk about <clears throat> the Freemason priest class. Conservative professions 
in America, and right wingers, Republicans, Catholic priests, and they're always constantly talking about, oh yeah, a Catholic priest said that Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden couldn't have communion. Catholic priests are the best, they say. And meanwhile, they're the worst pedophiles in the entire country. I've never heard a conservative ever say a, the, a Catholic priest is <clears throat> the best or the Pope is the best. I've never even heard that. And the Boy because Scouts, by the Boy way. Boy Scouts, which they is love the Boy Scouts. Right wing compared to the Girl Scouts. Nest of vipers and pedophiles and groomers, yep. okay? And the right wing's like, yes, I love how they molest the little kids like that. Go get them, Boy Scouts. Go get them. Boy Scouts is a Masonic fraternity. That's already been leaked. Priest, <clears throat> tell me I'm wrong. You guys love the Boy Scouts and Catholic Christians. You never criticize them. Well, okay, Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, Donald Trump says he's a great friend of mine. He said, oh, I know he likes them young. He said, I know he likes them young. Wish he said late. it. Yep. And he wished Ghislaine Maxwell well twice after she was arrested. The biggest groomer in American history. And as president from the podium, he was like, oh, I wish her well. Yeah. And but he leaked them. It was Trump's office that leaked them. Tim think, Pool, did you say, hey, no. Donald Trump is a monster who supports pedophiles and groomers? Well, just, no, Donald because, Trump's his daddy, yeah. right? He's your daddy, right? Tim Pool, you love your daddy. Daddy can do no wrong. Daddy can go ahead and wish Ghislaine Maxwell and whoever he wants well, knowing full well that this woman was standing trial for literally grooming young girls and women to be molested and sexually assaulted, and in some cases raped by Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, and politically, that's your side. <laughs> You're like shitting on your own side. But your daddy is the one who wished Ghislaine Maxwell well, so that's okay. That's okay. B biggest pedophiles yeah. in American politics, Dennis Hastert, former Republican Speaker of the House, Mark Foley, another Republican who tried to molest the kids who were interns and pages in Congress. And every step of the way, all the Republicans circle the wagons. Roy Moore, oh, our molesters are awesome, they say. Please vote for our molesters and our pedophiles, Republicans say. Republicans, you're guilty, okay? So, oh, oh, you don't like it? Does that hurt your feelings? Meanwhile, you call gay people groomers nonstop, and you don't care about their feelings. Now they're doing another talking point. All teachers are groomers and pedophiles. Why? Because the teachers union gives money to Democrats. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to destroy the teachers union. Wait, who said all teachers are pedos besides this channel? <clears throat> they're stealing from me. So well, Joe Rogan does it, Tim Pool does it, every Republican politician does it. And then I'm supposed to care about your goddamned feelings as you encourage people to murder gay people day in and day out? He said it. He talked about how Club Q were groomers after they were fucked, after they were massacred. The right wing are monsters. And I'll tell you right now, the number one reason they constantly talk about pedophilia is because it's going through their heads. Okay. Nonstop, they're thinking about kids. I guarantee it. The reason yeah, it's not the stripping in front of children. <clears throat> Tim Pool wears a beanie is because he's trying to contain the pedophilia that's in his head. That's why he's always talking about it. He's seeing it everywhere. Why? Because he's projecting. Oh, Tim, did your feelings this get- It looks so badass if he just pulled out a sword and hopped on a horse. <laughs> it hurt. You call everybody groomers and, pedoph and, and pedophiles, and you have no concern knowing full wall there are lunatics who can't wait to murder them in your audience. Can yeah, I no, oh, oh, but, oh, my, oh, you can't say that about me. Oh, I can. I don't know. I don't know that if you are. I do know you show all the signs of it. Nice. Who can play at that game? Wow. Yeah, I mean, look, and keep going if you want to, keep going. Because you, you, you'll go after medical professionals, doctors, nurses. Fauci. You'll go after teachers. <laughs> you'll go after workers, all sorts of groups of people who have no power. And then elections roll around and you're like, wow, how did the Republicans underperform so significantly? Could it be that they spend all their time attacking hardworking people in this country? Uh, they spend all their time defaming in the worst possible ways innocent people in this country? Because that's their bread and butter, Jenk. So I mean, the projection point I think is a good point because we've seen it play out so many times with so many right wing public figures. But the other possibility is this is Tim Pool's bread and butter. This is how he makes his money. This is what a small faction of rabid right wing zealots 
eat up. This is what they want for dinner, and this is what they consume on media. And that's what uh, Tim Pool and other goons like him provide. Isn't it amazing that they attack teachers, doctors, scientists, and the average worker saying their wages are too high? Mm -hmm. But they never attack bankers or corporate CEOs. Not surprising at all. They work oh, for the bankers and yeah, the corporations. Oh, wow, you guys are such populists because you dress like bums. Wow, you're so populist, okay? You're not populist. You're all you are is glorified trash fluffers of the powerful. Ironically, Tim Pool is on his knees every single day servicing corporate executives. Oh yeah, everybody hate the little guy, hate the average man. I'm such a populist because. Uh, last I checked, corporations all changed their logos to a certain flag. That's your team. I hate gay people and black people and brown people, right? Oh yeah, but corporate CEOs, I love you guys. Have I done enough? No, you've never done enough. Get on your knees again, Tim, and Joe Rogan, and Crowder, and all of you. Get on your goddamn knees for corporate executives that you serve with this goddamn hatred. But don't look at the real problem in the country. All those guys stealing your money through bribing all of our politicians, Republicans and Democrats. Don't look at that. Just focus on the culture wars and drive the hatred. Because mm -hmm. Tim's getting paid and so are all the other monsters in the right wing. They're terrible human beings. Look at that, look at that. This, this disgusting rat of a human is back being the Mexican punching bag for a day. How is this not racist? What conservative show does this, right? Like conservatives will make racial jokes, but they won't like, bring in a slave to be made fun of all day for what 10 years straight nobody notices all liberals are fucking pedophiles man one in the day chat. in and day out oh shit he run, said run, it he run, run okay uh let's see uh oh, what else we have we have louis throw um <laughs> Which one's the Nick one is Louis Thoreau one? I'm Louis. Th I was just Venom. watching a bit of it today. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I was watching it on. Uh, appreciate you, Zeking. Moist Critical does a piece on Sneeko, really? Just this one? I mean it when I say I didn't really want to talk about today's topic. It's just some medium rare internet beef that I think is just kind of worthless to go over. But so many people keep bringing it up to me that I feel I should at least talk about it to some extent. If Elmi so doesn't I'll have go stuff, ahead yeah, and I'm cannonball gonna... into the septic tank and doggy paddle around for a bit. The main topic involves a banned YouTube creator that I'm sure you've all heard of before. His name is Sneeko. A lot of people compared him to like a diet Andrew Tate. He recently got banned and he still does make content elsewhere. And recently he started targeting me because I made jokes about his friends on the Fresh and Fit podcast, whom I think are beautiful clowns that do some very silly stuff that is entirely entertaining to make fun of. But Sneeko didn't see it that way because he's a very sensitive guy and he started writing their wieners to try and defend a blatantly outrageous story that one of them told about meeting a basketball player at a party, then being invited by that basketball player to a mansion and then fucking a ton of girls at that mansion thanks to the basketball player, which sounds like something a Tumblr account would have made up and ending with, and everybody clapped. It was such a goofy piece of fan fiction, it felt like he was begging to be humiliated and made fun of, so... I started throwing some balls at the clown and dunking them in the tank. I made a video talking and joking about it, and Sneeko saw this and he wasn't too happy, so he got offended on his friend's behalf, which of course is a very alpha male thing to do. I know Sneeko doesn't like that nomenclature, he never calls himself an alpha male and thinks that it belittles him, but his fan base is and has been red-pilled and thinks of him as like a no-nonsense kind of guy who tells it like it is, a man's man. 
and yet Sneeko cries more than a 12-year-old going through puberty and has very public temper tantrums like a child who didn't get the Spider-Man toy they wanted for Christmas. So he was upset because I was making fun of them. He then makes a big rant about me, calling me a bitch, saying all kinds of things. He doesn't really make any points. He just insults my appearance a lot and makes very bold assumptions about me not going outside and shit like that. Which of course has nothing to do with anything I was saying, nor does it debunk any of my points. Not that I was even really making points, I was just making jokes about a silly fucking story, and he's taking it as if I just gave a TED talk on monogamy. Because for some reason he somehow gets lost in like this Winter Soldier episode, like this delusional fantasy, where he starts making a like a statement on monogamy. Which of course had nothing to do with the video I made. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say names. Someone texted me. He's in a monogamous relationship. Wait a minute. He's banned, isn't he? This gauge with the drama, even though I don't really want to. What I do want to talk about, though, is the Black Friday Moist Global merch sale, baby. A lot oh, of great awesome. merch on Moist Global, where during like a twerking contest, they'd have cameras that would go like right into their ass and zoom in. It was fucking disgusting stuff. And I made a whole video talking about how fucked up it is that not only does it exist, but Netflix has promoted it and it's on their service. Regardless of what the intention was or what the message aimed to deliver from the director, it completely missed the mark. By using real child actors and doing the things that they did in the film, it became a movie that was only enjoyed by legitimate, real, self-admitted pedophiles. And I made a video talking about how gross that whole situation was. And Sneeko made a response to it saying that the outrage around this film is misplaced and it's actually a good movie. Americans are like, this is deplorable. I saw this commentator, Penguin Zero, who I, I actually like. There's not a lot of good commentators, but he's like, this movie is, is deplorable. There's nothing good about it. There's nothing. And it's like he didn't even watch the movie. It's just like he only saw the clips that were going to piss him off. Or he just got so triggered by the provocative imagery that he just, deplorable. Come on, man. Like, don't you see the reasons why she's doing what she's doing? Sneeko has said multiple times, even in his most recent rant, that he does like my content. Though I'm pretty sure he just says that to cushion the blow and, like, tiptoe around it, like, before insulting me. Just in case there's anyone in his chat that likes my content, he wants to make sure to not make them upset. So he makes sure to preface it by saying, well, I actually do like him, but and then goes on to get super personal about it. This was my first real exposure to Sneeko, and it's also the reason I don't care what his opinion is of me, because it's coming from a man who likes cuties. So why the fuck would it matter if he thinks I'm a bitch or anything like that? It legitimately couldn't mean less coming from a guy who openly defends a softcore child porn production. Okay, if I ever wanted to get canceled, it, uh, this is the video. I saw Cuties last night and it was it was pretty good. It's a pretty good movie. I went in ready to hate like everybody else. I, I saw the cover and it was I got clickbaited. So did you, you got clickbaited. The thing about Cuties is it's not an unrealistic film. Like yes, it shows children in a sexual way, but this is not unusual now. And the people who are really mad about this aren't Gen Z. Now the reason I'm showing this isn't just to debate a multiple- I I uh, debate sneak on this. Not debate. We had an argument and I'm uploading the YouTube video tonight. I'll show you guys. ...year old Sneeko video that he completely ate shit on and had the worst possible take of with this whole cutie situation. The reason I'm showing this is because I haven't liked him since I saw this side of him. I, I was aware that he made other content and apparently some of it was pretty good a couple years back. But once I saw this video, it just showed me a really weird guy who it seemed like really just wanted to be contrarian for the sake of it and makes terrible points in defense of this film for some reason. Like, even in your own video, you openly admit right there that yes, it sexualizes children. Full stop, that's not okay. That's a problem. Like, this girl, at one point, she takes a picture of her vagina and posts it on Instagram. Kids naturally just rebel. I like this movie because it's extremely provocative, but it's realistic. A major criticism of this film was that it's child porn that they were just showing these kids and that it's going to bring a bunch of pedophiles in. I don't think so. Yeah, Sneagle fucked me up with this one because he turns to me and goes, Zerka, you didn't even watch the movie. And I'm like, I got to watch it to argue this? <laughs> and then Yassine makes a great point. Um, I'll upload. If Dead Hexer's in the chat, let him upload right now.
I don't think so. Not more than anything else that's on the internet now. Or not more than beauty pageants in America. Yeah, Yassine stops and goes, do you need to see pizza to know it's bad? Which still exists and are exactly what you see in the film. Do you go to beauty pageants to watch the kids, Sneeko? I certainly hope not. Just because the beauty pageants, which are fucked up, completely agree, just because those exist in the real world doesn't mean that that's justification for this movie. I feel like that should be obvious. You can't use this whataboutism like, oh yeah, Cuties has a lot of sexualization of children, but what about, you know, child beauty pageants? I mean, those are out there in the real world, so what's wrong with Cuties being on Netflix? I won't show you any more from this video, it's dog shit all across the board. But there is one more thing I'd like to highlight. Even when Sneeko started to rise to popularity, I didn't pay too much attention because, again, in my mind, he will always be that guy that for some reason fights for this film, which is just fucking weird. So he's always just been kind of a weird person to me that I don't pay too much attention to. But I couldn't help but take notice of one of his more recent viral clips where he openly defends getting cucked. So I wanted to break this down, like, because this was, imagine, see, imagine seeing the girl you love, like, get fucked. This is years get ago. Fucked. You love her? Yeah, I do. I love her. Yeah, I love her. I was about to say I love this bitch. I'm like, nah, let me not say that. I love my... I remember when I first saw this clip, this is like a year ago, I think, my chat would spam, yo, say you're kidding, because I said I was going to hunt him down and hurt him. Or like, it made a weird joke like that. But no, Stinko's a good dude. Queen. Queen. My queen. And answer, you allowed answer. the love of your life to get again. fucked by another man. What happened to the other dude? Is there, why, is there, why did that one last? I'm crazy. The first <laughs> time, as soon as I saw like three pumps in, I just got up and walked out. I'm just like, I can't. I can't. This feels like a like comedy. Feeling bit. traumatic thoughts, like seeing her with another person. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. To, I th but I think it's something everybody should do just to test. No! I, no. You know what? It is a legitimately super sad thing to sit there and listen to because Sneeko is very clearly bothered by that whole situation but is trying to play it off like a deeper message like no this is actually a good thing and in fact I recommend every guy out there try letting their girl get fucked by another man then you'll know if it's real if this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with it is fucking tragic to listen to now I want to be clear I have absolutely no problem with open relationships I think everyone should be completely within the right to handle their relationships how oh my god however they see fit and whatever makes them happiest Contrary to what Sneeko thinks about me, I have legitimately no issue with open relationships at all. But what Sneeko's talking about here isn't so much an open relationship, it's cuckoldry. You have watched your girl get fucked in front of you on at least two occasions that he talks about here. And you were right next to her, watching her get fucked, and one time you were so upset about it you had to leave the room after the third pump you said. You're clearly not really alright with this situation, you're for some reason forcing yourself to be okay with it. Like, I'm not trying to sit here and be an arm armchair psychologist like you try to do against me during your rants, but it really seems like you don't like it. And yet, for some reason, you're also trying to celebrate it and promote it like a good- He's a changed man. Right? I already attacked him on this a year ago. That's my best friend. The thing. It's just super sad. Like, if you're fucking other girls and she's fucking other guys, that's one thing. But you being in the same bed that she is fucking another man in and the watching houses. her. And then even talking about how, like, upset you were about how much she was moaning. And the deep eye contact she was making with the man she was fucking in front of you. Like, you're you're not really okay with it, it sounds like. So stop trying to pretend to be... <laughs> just like your other best friend, Destiny. This fucking guy, dude. <laughs> And stop trying to make it seem like this is a good, healthy thing for everyone that everyone needs to try. It's just pretty sad. So this is always in the back of my mind when he starts critiquing my relationship. Or really any relationship for that matter. Like what really gives you the right, especially when you're clearly in a very complicated situation in your own mind with your relationship. So, uh, I, like I said, I didn't really want to talk about this, but he apparently keeps shitting on me and, and making a big hoopla about it and people keep bringing it up to me. So I felt like I should at least address it in some capacity. So this is me talking about it and that's about it. So yeah. Do all of his videos end like that? So yeah. Okay, uh, I don't know if we have time for the documentary, but what other beef is there? Is Elmi in chat?
continue to harass you. Women should not be in combat roles. Who is arguing against this? Ask them, are you challenging me to a fight? So psychologically, the bully has a choice to make. Either yes, in which case you use what you know. Or if he says most of the time he'll say no, it's de-escalated. But you can only ask that question if you know the answer is yes, then you can handle it. Uh. Women can't handle it if they're in an inner city and a man is on PCP. Sports are sort of allegorical, analogous for war, right? In a lot of ways. It's a way of Imagine explaining to a woman why she's not made for combat. That makes you into a woman if you have to explain it. Sort of competing without mm -hmm. killing each other. So take wrestling, where we know it's not even remotely competitive. Mm -hmm. Now apply killing. We need the most effective fighting force possible. Just like I wouldn't send out a woman, for example, to wrestle Kale Sanderson, uh, I wouldn't send a woman who can't do a pull up. And that's the majority of female recruits in the military. I would not send her out to war. But she doesn't lose a match, she loses her life. And so does the guy next to her relying on her. I think it's important, more important than diversity. My, again, I'm going to bring it back to the standard point. I think that's an issue with the standards we have in the military, in the police force. I think the standards aren't high enough. Again, I, I agree. We can argue that there is a biological difference, but again, you're also talking about people have guns, they have a lot of technological advancements. Today's military technologically is off the charts. Like it is crazy how much money we put into the military every single day, technologically advancing ourselves. Sure. So. I actually agree with the statement you just made. I think it's very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Where you said, for example, guns, advancement, let's just say in firearms. Mm -hmm. um, that does equalize the playing field, mm -hmm. right? In a lot of ways. Okay, so that's a perfect example. For the same reason I support women, being able to carry firearms, and I actually support them carrying firearms because uh, it's the only way to be stronger than a man. It's mm -hmm. a mechanical advantage, right? Crowder, the type of guy to say Israel is our greatest ally. Why are you arguing about combat roles with a liberal woman who can't do a pull-up and has never been in a fight? Give me a break, man. Like, yes, we have advances in firearms. It's still the only way that a woman can overpower a strong man. Flip side of that coin, the police force, a woman will have to use a firearm. She'll have to use a weapon because she can't physically subdue a man. And that I don't believe is something where you talk about de-escalation. If you have to go to your tool belt because you cannot physically restrain a 250 pound man on PCP, But do you always have to? Because I'm saying between men and women, I'm saying in the police force in general, like I don't remember the exact like number so I can't really quote on this but I know for a fact that there is not enough training on de-escalation like they barely do any training on it at all I agree with the statement that I agree with you they should are... train that robustly okay I agree that you're saying like men and women like women are physically smaller we are biologically different but I'm saying in general you can't biologically weaker you're weaker than us you're not, you're not even one fourth the power that we have. Can't put the whole argument on just women, rather than putting it on a structural problem. Right, and it's I believe the structural problem is on. because of the matriarchy and the problem with feminism trying to lower standards to accommodate women. But can't you say it's also sexism because it's the idea that, like I was saying before, like you were talking about in the military how a lot of it is um, there's a lot of things given to women and it's like the men should be. Um, we're talking about like for example mental health, for example. Now we were saying Do that like men, um, men do. Men do everything better than women. Literally everything. Um, women are more likely to uh, PTSD, be discharged. But it's also because men aren't treated as seriously for it because it's like... That, that could be true. <laughs> it's an inference. I, I should do a change my mind Zerka style. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I think your inference might be correct. Yes. That could also be, instead of saying because of feminists, it could also be because of sexism. Towards men? Mm-hmm. You may be correct on that. I think it's probably a little column A, a little column B. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have quite a lot of data that shows that men tend to perform better under high compression stress scenarios than mm -hmm. women in general. There are always exceptions to the rule. Mm -hmm. um, and it tends to be more <laughs> traumatic for women. Mm -hmm. And then especially- There's with never exceptions to the rule. There's never been a woman who handled a high pressure environment better than a man in 6,000 years of recorded history. And you combine, right, uh, sort of a, being on the receiving end of a traumatic injury in the military, same thing in the police force. Um, but you mentioned de-escalation. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you do, you wrestle. Mm -hmm. So you have some understanding of, uh, I would say, controlling or subduing the human body, right? That's what sure. all grappling arts sure. are, whether it's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, wrestling, Judo. Um, I do believe that should be trained in the police force mm -hmm. so that you don't have to use a weapon. I think that we need higher standards, as a matter of fact. I think every member of the police should have 
basic grappling capabilities so that they don't have to. This man is our conservative icon. <laughs> it's like not an ounce of masculinity emanating from him. For example, <laughs> grab their gun or grab their taser. Now, de-escalation. I agree with you, that's very important. Here's what I would argue is the reality of de-escalation. You can only de-escalate if you have the nuclear option. What do I mean? You can't de-escalate with a large, strong, likely inebriated man who doesn't want to go back to prison if he sees a small, weak woman trying to de-escalate. He knows that he has a trump card and he can attack you. Mm -hmm. Statistically, it happens a lot. De-escalation can only take place with formidable capability. And women don't have that physically. As a general rule, not all women, and certainly most of the women in our police force today. For me, uh, I'm not disagreeing with your statement. I actually kind of agree with your statement. My only thing is, again, like I said, for de-escalation, when I think of de-escalation, I think of more like, you know, like um, physical therapy. You know how we learn about the cognitive, whatever. Like, um, cognitive you've ever, you've ever, yeah, you've ever heard about like you've ever um, taken a psycho psychology class? Sure. Okay. And they teach us about like different things about the human like behavior and things like that. I feel like in my, the way I think about it is I feel like cops should be taught that because they should be taught how to behave and be like not behave, but you know how to like. No, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, but. I think it's a very important component of the job, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's a very important component to be able to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, most police-civilian interactions, mm -hmm. most of them are not violent. Yeah. But every single police officer, male or female, mm -hmm. will have many violent interactions throughout their mm -hmm. career. And it only takes one. And if you're not physically up to the task, mm -hmm. and the women in our police force, the vast majority are not, not all of them, mm -hmm. but the vast majority are not, that's the problem. If I can, let me give you, this is, we've talked about the empirical and anecdotal story. Okay. And uh, I come from a background, done judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so we okay. don't really have wrestling in Canada. I think okay. uh, oh, Canadian but, wrestling, sorry. I know, it's not very good, yeah. There's the Olympic team, and like George St. and then everyone else. There aren't very, it doesn't happen in high school. Uh, but now I'm a new father, and um, I've also coached kids. Okay. Right. Sure. And here's a problem, too. You have a lot of moms, for example, who when they have sons, uh, they will tell them if they're dealing with a bully. And I had this. They say, you walk up to him and you tell him that he better stop. You know, he needs to stop or else. Or you tell him that he needs to stop, that this is, you know, he's just doing it because he feels bad about himself. In other words, whatever techniques that are often told to young boys, uh, it doesn't work if the bully knows he can kick your ass. That happened to me when I was young. I said, well, you know, stop. This is wrong. You need to stop doing this. The bully said, what? And kicked my ass. Only once I was able to physically defend myself could I de-escalate the situation. And then at that point I could say, look, do you really want to go this route? And that's what we actually teach children. Mm -hmm. We teach children, we teach them jujitsu. The Gracies actually do this. I mean, it's important we teach the psychology. We say, avoid it. And then if they continue to harass you, ask them, are you challenging me to a fight? So psychologically the bully has a choice to make. Either yes, in which case you use what you know. Or if he says most of the time he'll say no, it's de-escalated. But you can only ask that question if you know the answer is yes, that you can handle it. Uh -huh. Women can't handle it if they're in an inner city and a man is on PCP. You can't de-escalate from a position of weakness. Does that make does that make sense? Kind of. If we didn't have nukes and we told Russia, you know, we told Russia to stop it. They care? No. No, exactly. So it does matter. You can only have peace through strength, de-escalation, if they know that when push comes to shove, there are consequences. Um, and the statistics are really scary. Women, as far as being on the receiving end of violent attacks when they're police officers.